Hello and welcome to the first of this week's uh, Pause to Pray. Uh, I want to say thank you on your behalf and for myself to Andrew, Adelina and Simon for the last few weeks with their uh, inspiring and encouraging and challenging thoughts. And as I record this, it's a really beautiful morning with a clear blue sky. And I don't know about you, but that always lifts my heart. Um, so maybe whatever you're feeling at the moment, um, just take a moment to do what this title of this series is about. Pause, pray, give thanks for God's goodness to you. Father, we are thankful that you are good to us, and day by day your mercies are new, and we praise you for your kindness and your grace and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, Adelina shared about the God who sees us, uh, and she in turn was inspired by some thoughts that Andrew had shared from Psalm 23. Um, and in turn, again, Adelina's thoughts about how God sees us through Jesus made me think about some further examples that I'd like to share with you this week of how Jesus saw people that he met. And this week, I'm going to look at two such people. And the first of these is from Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 17, and I'm going to read them for you. This is a well-known passage of scripture, and I'm sure you have read it many times before and maybe heard sermons from it. And this isn't a sermon, it's a series of brief thoughts, but um, this is what we read in Luke 7, verses 11 to 17. Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, <clears throat> and she was a widow. <clears throat> and a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. Then he went up and touched the buyer that they were carrying him on, and the bearer stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. So the story unfolds at the edge of the town of Nain. I didn't know this before, but Nain means pleasant. Uh, the Prince of Life was about to enter the gate of the city when death came out. The Prince of Life was about to enter the gate of the city when death came out. Even today, when a mother loses a child, it, it's a sadness almost beyond bearing. But this was her only son, and she was a widow, so it was a deeper sadness for her. Added to which, unlike today, there were no social benefits to be claimed, not even a Palestinian version of food bank or a box of hope. Maybe some friends might have helped her, but in truth, she was on her own. It doesn't tell us if she had daughters, but even if she did, that wouldn't have been the same in that society as it would be today in ours. This woman, who's just known as the widow of Nain, had become destitute and desolate. But, and she didn't know it just yet, there was hope. And his name was Jesus. It tells her in verse 13, tells us rather in verse 13, that Jesus saw her. And I think not just with his eyes, though that's clearly true, but actually with his heart. In fact, we are 
told in the NIV that we've just read, uh, as when the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her. But in truth, those words are actually a bit tame, the way they're described in the NIV, that his heart went out to her. It's true, but it's a little tame. It underplays somewhat the reality of the words that were used. The Passion Translation is nearer the heart of it when it translates it as, when the Lord saw the grieving mother, his heart broke for her. The message paraphrase has his heart broke, but I, I like the added words of the Passion Translation, the added words of for her. For Jesus, it was deeply personal. It was all about the grieving widow. When the Lord saw the grieving mother, his heart broke for her. Many years ago, I remember um, Simon Steer at Redcliffe um, speaking on this, and, and he um, shared something that has stuck with me ever since, that the Greek word that's used here when it talks about his heart broke for her is the Greek word splankthna. Actually, the Greek word's a little longer than that. I just can't pronounce it. So I'm using the slightly shortened version of splankthna. And that Greek word denotes the deepest level of compassion. There is no greater word in the Greek language to describe the depth of emotion Jesus felt for this widow over the loss of her son. Splankthna is actually the word for intestines. Deep down in the very gut, if I can use that word, of who Jesus was, he was moved for her. Jesus' emotions fully identified with her grief and he carried her sorrow. He does that for us too. I don't know what circumstance you're facing today. You may well, as you listen to this, not have a beautiful blue sky above you. You may have metaphorically a very dark sky. Maybe life is really tough for you right now. But this Jesus who had his very bowels, his very intestines, his very depths of his being moved by this woman is moved by your situation too. So take a moment now in the quiet both to ask God to show you how he fully identifies with you, personally, right now, whatever is happening in your life, and to ask God for help in trusting him in the midst of these tough times. Just take a moment now in the quiet. And then finally, as we come to uh, a close of this brief session, there was a little comment in a, a commentary I was looking at, which said this, there at the gates where life and death meet, life wins and death is defeated. Life wins and death is defeated. It's an echo of the cross and the resurrection. Life wins and death is defeated. And for you and I today, that's true. Some versions of this story say that Jesus was moved with compassion for her. Many years ago, Tierfund had a slogan, compassion is pity in action. <laughs> we saw that with Simon last week in the story of the running father who had compassion on his son. We see it again here. Only Jesus can express that true compassion for you today. So let me lead us in prayer as we come to a conclusion of this session. Father, thank you so much 
for the compassion that Jesus showed to that grieving widow, where his very heart, the very depth of his being was moved with love and grace and kindness. Help us to remember, Lord, that you are moved with the same love and grace and kindness towards us in the midst of our tough times. We give you thanks for good things, for blue skies and beautiful sunshine on autumn days. We give you thanks too that in the midst of the cold and the wind and the rain of the weather and of what's happening in our lives, you are unchanging and we praise you and thank you for your love and kindness and mercy. In the name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. <laughs>